The following is a presentation of Nachi Creek Baptist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. For more information, please visit nachicreekbaptist.org. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We're grateful, Father God, that you've given us the privilege to come to your house. I pray your blessings be upon this meeting tonight. I know, Lord Jesus, that we have the opportunity as a church, as a body of believers, to meet in your presence tonight. And we have that opportunity to feel the Holy Spirit of God move in our hearts. And God, I know when it moves, it'll encourage us. And I know, Lord Jesus, how that Satan encloses us, how that Satan comes and how he tries to uh, put us in a place that we don't have any joy. And I just pray, God, that you'll set your people free tonight to worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Our world is headed to a dead end seems like it's picking up steam seem like our world is getting faster and faster towards judgment take your bibles tonight and turn to the book of first john chapter three and uh, i'm still trying to do some verse by verse teaching and preaching from this chapter and i want to talk to you tonight <clears throat> just simply ask the question it's a question of the ages. People ask this question often, why did Jesus come? And you can have all kinds of different answers. I mean, I've heard everything in the world about why that Jesus come to this world. Why was he incarnated? The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father and i like what john said about him full of grace and full of truth i want you to know folks i'm grateful that god was incarnated through the lord jesus christ why did jesus why was jesus Born in Bethlehem. Does anybody know that question? Well, the Word of God tells us it was a prophecy being fulfilled. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 2, and you read those verses 2 through 6, and when Herod heard that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he acquired of the, good, the, the three wise men that they might go and tell, find him and come back and tell him where, that this Jesus was. You know why he was interested? Because they asked the question, where is he that's born king of the Jews? He wasn't worried about Jesus. He's worried about his throne that he was sitting on. He didn't want to lose that power. And then the Bible says that it was prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem because it was the least of those in Judah. It was the least important town in all of Israel. When Jesus was born, what happened? He went to Egypt and stayed how long? A few years. And the Word of God says when he came back, he came back to a little town called Nazareth. Reckon why he did that? Anybody know why that he came back to Nazareth? Why didn't he come back home to Bethlehem? The Bible says in John chapter number 1, I believe verse 46 Peter and Andrew. And then the Bible says they went and found Nathanael and said, we found the Christ. And he asked this question. 
Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Why did he come? Why did Jesus come? Why was he incarnated? Why did he come to Bethlehem? Why did he come to Nazareth? He could have been born in a better city than Bethlehem. He would have had better recognition if he had been born in another town of Israel. If he had been born in another tribe of the children of Israel, listen, he was born to the least. The Bible says, Why did Jesus endure the cross? Why did he come? Why was he incarnated? Why was he born in the town he was born in? Why was he raised as a carpenter's son? Then why did Jesus have to go to the cross? You say, preacher, this is all elementary. Well, we got some elementary among us. The good news is the birth, death. And the resurrection. John, are you there yet? John chapter number 3. 1 John, that's 1 John. Back toward Revelations. And behold what manner of love, verse 1, starts out there. And we, we finished through 3 last, uh, a few weeks ago. It talked about that, that love and that hope purifies. I'm going to pick up the reading of verse number 4. It says this, whosoever commit a sin transgress also the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. What's that mean in today's language? I noticed the other day somebody put up a new sign on a piece of property, and it says, no trust passing. Now what's that mean? Don't cross the line. Stay on your side. And God, through the Word of God, teaches us that a trespass, a transgression, is breaking the law of God. Now, when you cross that line, that, they, that sign that says no trespassing, when you cross that, you broke the law of man. And when man sins, he's broke the law of God. And the Bible says in verse number four, whosoever commit a sin, that's crossing God's law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now, verse number five, I'm asking you the question, why did Jesus come? And we find, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you three things in these scriptures, and I'm going to use the word manifestation are manifested, okay? So when you, when you see that word manifest come up here in verse number 5, you'll, you'll find why, that's the first point, why Jesus come. Now what's that word manifest mean? Uh, it literally means, Webster says it means to make something plain or to make it clear or to prove a fact. Now, I, I find, why did Jesus come? He says in verse number 5, And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So the first reason that he came, he came to take away our sins. That is, number one, the reason that he came. He come to be a sacrificial lamb that you and I might be set free from sin. And I like what he says in this fifth verse. He says to take away our sin and in him is no sin. Aren't you grateful that we have a perfect Savior tonight? We have one, the Bible says, that come to take our sins. Now the Word of God plainly tells us, teaches us simply this. In Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And that word uh, in that scripture, in that verse of scripture, when it says all, that means every one that came forth from woman. Every one of us have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says that because sin has entered in, that we needed a Savior. We needed someone to satisfy the holy God in heaven that you and I might be able to be bought back and have the opportunity to, to go to heaven. And the Bible says that Jesus' coming was to manifest that God had sent his Son to come and take away the sins of the whole world. Our world don't have to go to hell. Our world, our families and friends don't have to miss heaven tonight. Why? Because Jesus come to take away the sin of the world. And the Bible tells us in these verses of Scripture about that. And I got to thinking about it. What sin brings. The Word of God teaches us uh, that what sin does. It says for the wages in 623 says for the wages of sin is what? Death. Uh, you see, the Bible tells us, let's just go back and reminisce a little about the Word of God in Genesis chapter 3. You'll read 1 through 3 and 4. You'll find that the uh, Word of God says that here comes the devil and he begins to talk to Eve uh, and he begins to uh, put into her mind. Others uh, said, listen, God just simply don't want you to eat of that fruit uh, because you'll not surely die. The biggest lie that's ever been told because God done told her if she partook of that fruit, man should surely die. Hey, folks, what happens? What happened in the garden? The first thing that happened, separation come. Listen, folks, you, you, cannot, you cannot take separation out of sin. Sin always separates. It separates our relationship with our God. And it separates even our relationship with our fellow man. Uh, folks, I, I believe that when sin come, it come and it brought separation with it. I find uh, that not only does it bring separation, but I find in Romans 5, number 12, let's read it together. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, it says, Wherefore, as one man sin entered the world, and death came by sin. He says, so death is passed upon all men, for that all have sin. Hey, folks, I, I just know that when a sin comes, it brings death. Uh, but before it brings death, it brings separation in men's lives. It brings sorrow in men's lives. The Word of God simply says this, there's pleasure in sin for a season. How many folks are in that season of sin? Well, as, does nothing bad happen to me yet? And I want you to underline that yet because if you're saved by the grace of God, God will chasten you. And if you're lost at one of these days in hell, you'll lift up your eyes and folks, that yet will come. Uh, folks, I believe this with all my heart. I believe sin brings separation. I believe sin brings sorrow. I believe sin brings pain. Uh, folks, I believe sin uh, comes, and it, when it comes into our lives, it might seem good for a little while, but I want you to know I believe there's pain comes along with sin. I saw too many broken homes and broken lives because of sin. Does it do you good to see Satan destroy a home? Does it good, do you good to see Satan destroy a life? Do you enjoy a sin, a sin, sin, destroy men's relationship with one another? Do you uh, enjoy seeing a sin come into the church and destroy relationship amongst God's people? Or what did the Bible say? Satan come uh, to deceive and destroy. The Bible says uh, that Satan come uh, to rob and kill and destroy. But thank God, Jesus come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. The Word of God says, Jesus come to take away the sins of the world. He said in verse number 5, to take away our sins, put it down personal. 
You see, not only does sin bring separation and sorrow and pain, but you see, sin brings poverty. You want to know why that our world is in poverty today? It's because of sin. And I, I just, I can't stress this enough. I, I get so tired. I get so tired of seeing it so often that a fellow take his paycheck and on Friday he buys three things. He buys liquor or beer. He buys lottery tickets. And he buys cigarettes. And folks, when he gets all that bought, he's done spent the majority of the money that he can't even take sometimes his family out to dinner or he can't even feed them. He has to send them to some of the churches on Saturday morning after he spent everything Friday night. He sends his family to churches and they get food from the food pantry and they get clothing from the clothing department. I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. If it wasn't us for sin, our world would be in abundance of God's blessings. I know we're to have compassion. And the Bible says compassion makes a difference. But I tell you, it's hard for me to have too much compassion in my heart for a man that will not provide for his own household. Paul told Timothy that a man will not do that will he's denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Well, why did Jesus come? He come away, he come to take the sins of the world. He come to take our sins away. And the Bible says the reason that he could do that because there was no sin in him. The Bible tells us what did Jesus bring? You see, I find all that what man's brought, the Satan has brought, and how that Satan's trying to destroy. But Jesus, the Bible says. In verse number 5, in him there is no sin. Why did Jesus come to begin with? I'm going to ask you this question all night, so get used to it. First Peter chapter number 2, verse 21 through 25. First Peter chapter number 2, verse 21. For even here and two were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his what? Steps, verse 22. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Verse 23. The Bible says, who when he was reviled, reviled not. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. What did he do in the garden? He prayed to his blood a sweat become as great drops of blood. And this was the words Jesus said three times. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. What was the will of God? That Jesus would come and die for my sins. Now verse 24. It said, in whom in, in his own, body, own self bore our sins in his body on the what? That we being dead to what? I told you what sin brought. There we are dead. And the Bible says, Should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Uh, verse number 25. For ye are sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd, the bishop of your soul. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, sin brought separation, death. It brought poverty. Hey, folks, it brings misery in people's lives. But when Jesus come, he come to take away the penalty of sin. And ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said he bore our sins in his body on the cross who knew no sin, that he might be a sin sacrifice for our sins. Verse Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. It says this, For Christ also had once suffered for sin. Now I want you to underline this. The just for the unjust. That always gets me. Hey folks, the one that was justified before God. The one that needed not to ever repent. 
the one that never had sinned, never done a wrong thing before his father. The Bible says the just died for the unjust. Who is the unjust? I've been telling you for the last 10 minutes who we are. Oh, we're the ones that sin and come short of the glory of God. We do not realize how, folks, uh, God has taken an unjust group of people like us. And, folks, uh, Jesus come and died on the cross, and he brought us into the sheepfold. And the Bible says, uh, Peter said, by his stripes, thank God, I got healed. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to who? To God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit of God. Why did Jesus come, anyone? How uh, folks, he tells us in this scripture to take away our sins. In him was no sin. Now let's move on. That's number one. And who did? Verse number six. Abide in him. Sin not, and whosoever abideth in him sin not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither knoweth him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. And the Bible says in verse 8, Who that committeth sin is of the devil. Then we move on. For the devil sinneth from the when? From the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest. There's that word manifest again. He was made known. God is making it plain through his word. He, he sent Jesus to make it plain that he come to die for our sins. Who knew no sin? Then he says in verse number 8, Here God is again sending his Son. Uh, that he might manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank God for that, amen. I want you to understand this. Uh, they go ahead and vote in all they want to. All the liquor uh, license they want to. They can vote in all the beer uh, permits they want to. I'd hate, I'd, I'd hate to sit on some council that had to raise my right hand and vote in that stuff. I'd hate to be in a place that I had to go through and do that. So, and this is what they say to me, that I've talked to the council members and say, well, uh, that's our duty. No, I want you to know what your duty is, is to do what's right for mankind. And the Bible tells us, you say, well, preacher, uh, you're separating the church and state. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for the church, there wouldn't be no state. And I am sick and tired of people telling me all these excuses. I wish some of our people get some backbone and stand up and say, we're going to stand for what God says. We're going to stand for what's right. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, I understand how that Satan works. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, our Savior that left heaven, the one that was just, that came for the unjust, you know what he came? He came to destroy the works of of the devil. You say, preacher, is he doing it? Oh, yes, he's doing it. Yes, he is. He, he's, he's doing it. You say, preacher, it looks like Satan has got a hold on this world. Oh, yes, he has. But that's biblical. They're more going to hell than going to heaven. That's biblical. Hey, listen, you read the reaping of the sowing, and you'll find only one-third or one-fourth of the seed ever brought good, uh, good uh, stuff. It brought the good food. It brought the, uh, the good plants. Hey, three-quarters of it was wasted. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, I believe biblically there's 75%. You may not believe this, but I believe that there's 75% of church members across our world lost without Jesus. Besides the lost world, they hadn't heard the word. They hadn't received the word. They hadn't taken the word on thorny ground. They hadn't taken the word on rocky ground. Uh, they hadn't taken the word on wayside. Uh, but the Bible tells us uh, that folks, that Satan, this is his empire. This world, he's the prince and power of it. 
Hey, folks, he's having a good time. Hey, folks, he's getting stronger and stronger. And we talk about it in our deacons meeting tonight. I want you to know, folks, the, the Christian world is going to see rougher days ahead than we saw behind. Listen, the world and the, all the news media and all the governments and everywhere you turn them, they're trying all they can. Listen, if you uh, stand for what's right from the Word of God, uh, they'll uh, neutralize you, uh, they'll call you a radical, and they'll put you aside. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, reckon what they call John the Baptist. When he called them a bunch of hypocrites. Amen. What do you think they call Jesus? They call him a troublemaker. He's come to upset our world. He's come. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the world was upset before Jesus ever come. Oh, the world was upside down before Jesus come. He come to set it right up. And folks, I believe this with all my heart. I believe Jesus is still destroying the works of Satan. Why? Because he met in the garden and he messed up the garden, but God gave him a promise in the garden. And he gave me and you a promise in the garden. If you got your Bibles, go to Genesis 3, verse 15. And this is the first promise God gives us in the Bible. Why did Jesus come? The Bible says the first thing is to manifest, to make known that he come to die for the sins of all the world, for our sins, for you and I who had no sin in him. The second thing, why did he come? The Bible says that he come to destroy the works of Satan. Now, folks, listen. When Adam and Eve sinned, everything's all right till God come walking in the cool of the day. And the Word of God said they hid themselves. God asked them why they hid themselves. Had they eaten? And the Word of God says that Adam blamed it on Eve. And God gave us a promise. Verse 15, what does it say? And I will put enmity. I'm going to make you an enemy. I'm going to make an enemy between the spirit and the flesh. That's what God was saying. He says, uh, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Now let me ask you a question. What would you rather be bruised at, on your head or your heel? Amen. That's a no-brainer, amen. You know what he's saying here? Satan will bruise his heel on the cross. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, resurrection bruised Satan's head. That's the victory. That's where the victory is. That's the reason that we can say that Satan, his power, he was broken on the cross of Calvary. Hey, when Jesus come out of that tomb that morning, ladies and gentlemen, thank God that Jesus become victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Thank God that Jesus come to destroy the works of Satan. And I've got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. He can do it for your family tonight. He can do it for your life tonight. You see, the Bible says... Jesus is still destroying the works of Satan. You see, Jesus is still saving in John 6, 37. You read that and you'll find, he said, all that my Father has given me comes to me. Aren't you grateful for that? They shall come, and to him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Aren't you grateful that Jesus is still uh, destroying the works of Satan? Aren't we grateful, little Twain, this morning he come before Jesus and listen, Satan tried to take that little boy to hell, but I'm grateful that Jesus come to die for the sins of Twain and all of our sins. And the Bible says because of that, he could call upon the name of Jesus and Jesus destroyed the work of Satan. When God saves you, that destroys the work of Satan on your salvation. He's still changing lives, is he not? We say, preacher, 
wish would God would send a great revival, and you're not the only one wishing that. But I believe he does it through individuals. I believe he does it too. We say, well, preacher, I'd like to see a revival in America. Revival in America will never come till the individuals start getting revived. And the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New what? Creature, he's a new what? Creature. Listen, when Jesus comes in, he destroys the powers of Satan. He destroys the devil in our lives. Behold, all things become new. Aren't you grateful that when Jesus comes in, all things of folks are past, and behold, all things become new. I'm grateful to tell you, folks, that Jesus is still destroying the works of the devil through saving people, through changing their lives, through giving men the freedom to worship. What's it say in John 8, 36? I like what he says in verse 32. talks about the word. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son therefore shall make thee free, you're free in what? You like that word indeed? You're indeed free. Now I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. That you're a child of God. You have to crawl over the grace of God to sin. Can I say that again? You have to crawl over the works of Jesus on the cross of Calvary to go back and sin in your life. And when we do that, the Bible says that we bring him to an open shame. Listen, child of God, I want you to know this. If you don't get anything else tonight, just remember this. Jesus is destroying the powers of Satan. He can still do that. <laughs> oh, yes. The Bible tells us, oh, my, there's a way out, are there not? Is there a way out? Say, preacher, I'm in a tough spot. Yeah. We all get in tough spots. But Paul told the church at Corinth, what did he tell them in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13? Paul says that no, there is, hath no temptation taken, but that such as is common to man, but God is what? You believe God's faithful. I believe this, folks. I believe while Jesus comes, he's still destroying the works of Satan. Why? Because God is faithful whom will not suffer you to be what? Shall not suffer you to be what? Say it out loud, church. Tempted above that which you are able to what? But will give you with a temptation and also make you a way of what? That you might be able to You still believe Jesus is destroying the works of Satan. There's not a temptation comes our way. Now, I just believe what he says. That's common to man. But God's faithful. That when our silver to be uh, tempted above that which we are able to bear it. Hey, folks, but God in every situation, if we seek God, God always has a way of escape. I said a minute ago, you have to crawl over the grace of God to sin. I have to crawl over the grace of God to sin. Last thing. First John chapter 4, I'll be through in just a second. 4 verse number 9. I told you to watch that word manifest. To make known, make clear, make plain. To prove. To prove. To prove. What did he, the reason he come, first of all, why did he come? To take our sins. Number two, why did he come? The Bible says to destroy the works of the devil. Then verse number um, nine, he tells us the third thing, the reason did he come. John's given us an answer. And this was manifest. What? And this was manifest the 
love of God toward who? Why did he come? That he might make known, that he might prove, that he might make clear that God loves us. <laughs> Christmas is all about the love of God. Why did he come? That he might love us, that he might show God's love for us. And the Bible says uh, down in the latter part, because God sent he is only begotten Son, verse number 9, into the world that we might live through who? Through who? And when I live through him, I please God. And when I live through Gail Miller, I please the devil. Can I get an amen there? And Jesus come to destroy the works of what? The devil, and if I live as a child of God uh, to please the devil, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you may not believe this, but sometimes God shortens our days because that we live through the flesh. You want to know why that we have so many diseases in America? You, you know what? You, you that work in the health care, you understand some of this, but if I'm, if I'm wrong, you hold up your hand and you correct me. We, we've got things now that our antibiotics can't touch. Am I not correct? There's, there's strings of this stuff. They say that antibiotics can't. They're resistant to it. They built their own resistance to it. That's the works of the devil. Why? Because man has uh, infiltrated himself and filled him, he's infiltrated all the world and he's filled himself. Children of God has infiltrated the world. God don't intend for us, to you and I, to settle in this world. He wants you and I to come out from among the world. And what's happened? Because that we've went back into the world, listen, we're paying for our sins. Number one cost in America. You know what number one cost in America is? Health care. Entitlement program. Health care. You know what's going to happen? You can say this or not. You can believe this or not. We're going busted because of our sins. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever studied anything about the Amish? How many has ever been to some of the Amish settlements? I love to go to the honest Amish settlements. And you know what they say about the Amish settlements? That there's zero crime in the Amish settlements. And the, the, uh, it talks about the Amish settlements that they don't, they don't, uh, have to go to the hospitals. They don't have a lot of all the programs. Now they got problems just like you and I have. Satan attacks them, but they keep it within their uh, confines of their settlements. And they don't let the world and all these people in. And listen, they don't get out into the world. And they say if the, if the United States was like the Amish, there'd be no social programs in America. There wouldn't be no welfare. There wouldn't be any Social Security. There wouldn't, well, all these other entitlements, Social Security, you paid that in. You're entitled to that. But all these other entitlement programs and all that man is doing and all the things going on. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. It's not inhumane to let people die in the hands of God. Sometimes I'm afraid that man's playing God and trying to resist the hand of God. I have a living will. They only made me sign that thing three times and get it notarized four times to make sure it's right. And it says in there when it comes to a time that I don't have any quality of life, 
I've signed and had it sealed. And folks, I, I intend to do this. I don't intend to lay as a vegetable unless it's God's will. They say, preacher, you're crazy. Let me ask you, what would be more crazier, to stay in this old wicked world or to go be with Jesus when Jesus calls you? <laughs> and I tell you, I, I find it all the time that families put their loved ones, and I, I want to, may only please, if, I, there's, if there's an ounce of hope that I can live, let me live, okay? <laughs> but if there's not, I, I want you to turn me over to the hand of God. I want to be able to let God take me out. And I find that, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we're living in a time that man is plan, trying to play God. But the Bible says in these verses of Scripture that God, and the reason Jesus came was to manifest God's love for you and I. And then he moves on. He said, verse number 10, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his own son, or his son to be a perpetuation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Jesus come to show the love of God. And you and I, are here to show the love of God. That's the reason the church is here. Sharon, get us a song, would you? When I was a sinner, lost without Jesus, I'm a saved sinner tonight, okay? I'm a saved sinner. But when I was without Christ, Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward me, in that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Why did Jesus come? First reason, what was it? To pay for our sin debt. Why did Jesus come? To destroy the works of who? Why did Jesus come? To show the love of God 